Today we're going to talk about neuroanatomy. So in today's class we're going to talk about the central nervous system and we will discuss parts of the brain. So we'll talk about the central nervous system, the CNS, today and the next time we'll talk about the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so the human central nervous system, so this is the CNS, is what we're going to refer to it as, and this is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. So our central nervous system is our brain. You can see the spinal cord connected to the brain. Um, the brain is also referred to as the cerebrum, and this is just the mass of the brain. So when you just look at this mass of the brain, we call that the cerebrum. There's a really interesting fact that there is no sense of pain in the brain. And this fact allows neurosurgeons to probe areas of the brain while the patient is awake. So feedback from the patient during these probes is really useful for identifying important regions, especially areas of speech. Okay, so when we look at the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, when we look at the brain, there are several layers of tissue that separate your brain from the outside world. Okay, so first there's your, your skin on your scalp, um, and then beneath the skin is your bone, so you know you've got your skull underneath your skin. Below the skull are three special coverings called the meninges. Okay, so there's these three coverings underneath the skull called meninges. Um, you may have heard of the illness called meningitis. Meningitis is an infection of the meninges. So the outer layer of the meninges is called the dura mater, or just dura. And the dura is tough. You can see a, this picture of it here, the dura mater here. The dura is tough and thick, and it can restrict the movement of the brain within the skull. So this protects the brain from movements that may stretch and break brain blood vessels. The middle layer of the meninges is called the arachnoid. And what does that make you think of? It should make you think of um, spiders. And it actually kind of looks like spiders or spider web, this next layer of the arachnoid. Um, and that helps protect and cushion the brain as well. The inner layer, the one closest to the brain, is called the pia matter, or just the pia. And you see this really thin layer here. So there's three layers of meninges. Okay, so if we look at a lateral view of the human brain, if we just look at um, a picture from the side, this is um, somebody's brain where you can, or you can also refer to this as the cerebrum, this mass of the brain. You can see there are still um, blood vessels um, on the outside of this brain. Here is a dorsal view of two different brains. Um, and you should be able to notice a difference between these two brains. They should look really different. So this one here should look, um, this is a more of a healthy looking brain. Typical looking brain, do you see how compact it looks? And then this one, you should notice there's these big gaps in here. Um, and it looks kind of shrunken away in certain points. The difference between these two brains is that um, the person here on the right, their um, history was that the, this person was a, a lifetime alcoholic. And so the alcohol actually has um, withered away parts of his brain. This person here was not and died from complications that didn't have anything to do with, um, with brain health. Just an interesting tidbit to look at. Okay, so the, let's talk about the parts of the brain. So we can break the brain into two halves, and we talk about these in terms of a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this picture here. Do you see there's a, um, a right and left hemisphere? So you see the line 
that goes down the middle. This divides the left and right hemisphere. The cerebral cortex or the cerebrum is just the mass of the brain. So just the whole thing, this mass of the brain is called the cerebrum or cerebral cortex. The cerebellum is in the back part of the brain along with the brainstem. And the brainstem connects the brain to the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about these structures in more detail in, later in this presentation. All right, so let's look at this cerebrum or cerebral cortex. So the cortex has gyri, sulci, and fissures. And so the gyri are these raised parts. The sulci are the spaces in between. So you see the spaces in between here? These are sulci. And fissures are larger um, separations. So this large gap here, straight down the middle, this is called the cerebral longitudinal fissure. And it um, divides the left and right hemisphere. So these fissures are just lo uh, larger gaps. And there's the sulci, the small gaps, and then the bulge ridges are the raised bulges are the gyri. Okay, so our brain weighs about three pounds, and it's really highly involved. It's really highly evolved to be a site of information processing. Okay, so on the cerebral cortex, the outer layer of the um, cerebral hemisphere is made up of gray matter. And so you can see, if we look at this picture, do you see how it's gray all around here? This is gray matter, which are made up of the cell bodies of neurons. And underlying the cortex is white matter, which consists of axons, or um, axons can be thought of as cables carrying information from one neuron to the other. So underneath here, you can see these, the, how it looks whiter here, and these are the white. This is the white matter. Okay, the two hemispheres of the brain are connected by the corpus callosum. So if we took a, um, a slice of the brain, so do you see this pink strip here? If we cut here and opened up the brain, you can see this structure here connecting the two hemispheres. This is called the corpus callosum, and it facilitates communication between the two hemispheres. Okay, so if we were to cut a brain open straight down the cerebral um, longitudinal fissure, to separate the left and right hemispheres of the brain, you would open it up and you would see this structure here, and this is the corpus callosum. Okay, when we talk about our left and right brain, we talk, we talk in terms of hemisphere dominance and talk about what our right brain does and what our left brain does. So, have you ever talked about or, or heard somebody say, oh, I'm a right brain person or I'm a left brain person. Um, we have different hemispheres of our brain are more dominant in certain people. So our right brain processes insight, 3D forms, art awareness, um, imagination, music awareness, and our right brain controls our left side of our body. So our brain is ipsilateral, and so the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, and the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. Now the left brain functions, it's really all about spoken language, and written language, and reasoning, and number skills, and scientific skills. These are all left brain functions. So I really like this picture of a left and right brain. So when you think of somebody who is a right brain person, they're more creative and um, artsy, and you can see this kind of depicted in, in this right brain, someone filming something, playing music, looking at a telescope, painting, doing yoga. 
In the left brain, you can see people sitting down um, processing information. So in our right hemisphere, just to keep going with our discussion on what our right hemisphere does and what our left hemisphere does, our right hemisphere, we process non-linguistic stimuli. So this means that our brain is processing rhythm and stress. So even when you're just listening to somebody talk, and you may not be listening to the words that they're saying, you can still pick up on the rhythm and, and the intonation patterns that they're using. And it's your right brain that, that's doing this. Um, and so that goes along with the prosodic elements of speech. So prosody is just um, the melody of speech, how it sounds. So someone who is monotone does not have a lot of prosody in their speech. They're pretty flat sounding. Um, discrimination and ordering of tonal stimuli is in our right hemisphere. Recognizing faces. The ability to recognize people's faces are in our right. Um, understanding that there are, um, you can break down whole pieces of things into different parts. Sequencing and visual spatial ability, abilities, math, calculation, art, music skills, abstract reasoning, and attention. So being able to pay attention to something and allocating your um, attention to something to, to maintain focus. These are all processed in the right hemisphere. In the left hemisphere, what I really want you to remember you cannot walk out of this class without knowing that language is housed in the left hemisphere. We process language in our left hemisphere. So we process analytic and semantic linguistic processing. So you all should have taken 101 by now, so you should know that semantic processing is, is understanding what words mean. Phonological analysis is understanding sounds, and word retrieval is retrieving words from your mental lexicon. Um, the ability to produce speech and engage in concrete thought processes, this is all in your left hemisphere. So as a speech pathologist, you are very, very interested in the left hemisphere because this is where language is housed. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more broadly beyond just looking at the left and right hemisphere, let's look at the cerebrum. And we can talk about the four major lobes of the brain. So there's the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital, and the temporal lobe. So let's look at each of these lobes. So you can see here, the, this is the frontal lobe here. And you can see it's got labels of, we have speech over here, planning and consciousness, um, you see body movement and coordination. We move back here to the parietal lobe, and you see sensation and touch and body position. The occipital lobe in the very back is for vision. The temporal lobe on the side, you can see it's labeled for hearing. So let's talk about each one of these lobes in detail. Okay, so here's just another view. This, um, of the frontal lobe, you can see the central sulcus divides the frontal from the parietal. The occipital in the back, this is the cerebellum at the bottom and the brainstem. The temporal lobes are on the side. Okay, so the frontal lobe includes the primary motor area. So this includes the motor cortex. So I'm going to go back one slide to show you this picture. So do you see this strip right here? This is called the motor cortex, and it controls our body movement and coordination. Our frontal lobe also controls language and speech, but only on the left side. Okay, so this is really important. Just in the left hemisphere, left frontal lobe. We have the control of language and speech, and we have Broca's area, which is for speech production. And then the homunculus, I'll show you a picture. 
This is a pictorial representation of the anatomical divisions of the primary motor.